Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Donna Villa coming to you from Chicago, USA. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. More than 350 people have died in the Philippines after the nation was pummeled by Super Typhoon Rai on December 16. The death toll is expected to rise as rescue workers are searching for bodies among the rubble of flattened buildings. As many as 56 people are missing and more than 500 have suffered injuries in the natural disaster. Rescue workers and police are still unable to reach certain villages and towns because of the downed communication networks and power outages. Typhoon Rai hit the archipelago with winds reaching 195 kilometers per hour. More than 480,000 people have been displaced, according to the country's National Disaster Agency. The Catholic Bishops' Conference has urged the faithful to pray for the recovery of the typhoon-affected regions. The Church has designated December 25th and 26th as National Days of Prayer for the Affected. Pope Francis has also expressed his closeness and prayers for the victims. In a shocking development, a BBC probe has revealed that Myanmar military tortured and killed at least 40 men and buried them in mass graves in July of this year. The BBC released the gory details of the crime following interviews with 11 witnesses and cross-checking their revelations with videos gathered by Myanmar Witness, a non-government organization probing human rights violations in the Asian country. The killings took place in the province of Kani in Saging District in the central part of Myanmar. After the military seized power in February this year, clashes between troops and armed ethnic militia intensified in the region. The report says that soldiers clubbed 14 men to death in the village of Yin and threw their bodies into a ravine. In the neighboring village of Zibinduin, Twelve disfigured bodies were found, including that of a child and a physically challenged person. In Iraq, the Chaldean Church observed a day of fasting and prayer on Tuesday, December 21st, for peace, stability, and development in the country that is slowly recovering from the ravages of the U.S. invasion and the Islamic State terror. It was Cardinal Louis Rafael Sacco, the head of the Chaldean Church, who gave the appeal to all people of goodwill, including Muslims, to take part in the prayer initiative. The top prelate said that only with prayer and the cooperation of all people of goodwill can the crisis be solved. Cardinal Sacco said that the prayer day was also aimed at facilitating the formation of a national government and to achieve peace and stability. Joining hands with Caritas Iraq, the Cardinal distributed food baskets with necessary items to a thousand needy families. Facing stiff opposition from local Muslims, the authorities in the Indonesian province of South Sulawesi were forced to revoke their decision to put up banners depicting Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in offices of the Ministry of Religion Affairs. Initially, the local authorities wanted to display the banners in a bid to promote religious harmony and issued a letter on December 14th announcing the decision. But it was met with a huge outcry from Muslims who objected to the proposal. Members of the United Muslims Forum visited the regional office of the Ministry of Religion and demanded that the proposal to have the banners be scrapped. Following their protest, the government officials were forced to withdraw the proposal. Father Antonius Beni Suyatio, a member of the presidential unit promoting communal harmony, said opposition to Christmas greetings shows a shallow mindset. In the Republic of Ireland, psychiatrists have strongly objected to the proposal to introduce assisted suicide in the country. The College of Psychiatrists has said that introducing euthanasia is incompatible with good medical care and poses a threat to, to vulnerable patients. The doctors issued a paper in which they said that euthanasia results in suffering and could lead to unwanted consequences, such as an increase in demand. 
They said that good palliative care ensures dignified deaths to terminally ill patients. Dr. Eric Kelleher, one of the authors of the paper, said that methods used to cause death to the terminally ill can result in protracted suffering. The Dying with Dignity bill has passed its second hurdle in the Irish Parliament, and it will come up before a special committee of the cabinet. There seems to be no end to bloodshed in Nigeria. In the latest round of attacks in the troubled West African nation, at least 38 people were killed by unidentified bandits over the weekend. The armed men set aflame houses, cars, and farms in three villages of Kaduna State. According to reports, men with machetes and guns raided the villages of Kauranfawa, Marki, Rihia, in Giwa local government area of Kaduna between Saturday and Sunday. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari has condemned the attacks and Governor Nasir El Rufai expressed his condolences to the affected people and directed the State Emergency Management Agency to assess affected districts to provide help. Nigeria, particularly the North, has been plagued by security issues ranging from kidnapping to extremist insurgency since 2017. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.